Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another video from the Dermoscopy Made Symbol series. Uh, today we're going to talk about acral and subungual melanomas. Now, an acral melanoma, usually one that's occurring in the pans of the hands or the soles of the feet, and the classic dermatoscopic pattern are parallel lines, ridges. Now, about the only other cause of this pattern is a subcorneal hemorrhage. But you can take a 15 blade and quietly just trim that away if that's the case. I'll show you an example later. So, parallel lines or ridges um, for an acral melanoma. A subungual melanoma is probably part of an acral melanoma. It usually just involves a single nail. So one nail is involved. You don't have a lot of pigment lines going down, several nails. And when you look at these, uh, this nail, it'll have pigment bands of varying color and width. So they'll be parallel to each other, they'll vary in color, they'll vary in width. And there may be a bit of a loss of parallelism uh, in some areas. You know, the lines can converge on each other. Now remember, they're usually of recent onset subungal melanomas. You haven't got a line that's been there for 20 years. And it usually occurs in adults rather than something that's been present since childhood. So acromelanomas, subungal melanomas. Let's have a look at them. This was a pretty subtle uh, acromelanoma. This lady had presented to a podiatrist. The podiatrist trimmed away what was thought perhaps to be a plantar wart, but the podiatrist had enough sense to see that there was something else there. And when you look closely, you start to see these lines of pigment here, and the pigment are in the ridges. These are the broad ridges, and these are the white furrows on either side of these broad ridges. So this was a parallel ridge pattern, and it hadn't all been trimmed away by the podiatrist, so it wasn't some sort of subcorneal uh, hemorrhage. This, in fact, was uh, an acral uh, melanoma, uh, from memory, it was 1.3, 1.4 millimeters thick. And this is what she ended up with, with uh, a large full thickness skin graft applied to the, uh, to the sole of her foot. Now, here's a much more obvious one. This image is from the scans blog, courtesy of Jean-Yves Gourand and Dr. Martin Gnazia from Lagny in France. Now, this was a lesion pre presenting on the foot of a gentleman with uh, fairly dark colored skin, irregular edges. And when you look at it with the dermatoscope, you just look towards the edge of the lesion to see what's going on. And there it is again. Pigment in the ridges. These are the pale furrows either side and the broad ridges. So lines parallel ridge pattern. A very obvious acral uh, melanoma. Sometimes they're not quite as obvious as that. This is another one from the scans blog, courtesy of Alan Cameron. Uh, this was the diffuse lesion in the back of someone's heel. I think they thought it might have been a bruise. But of course the bruise didn't evolve, it didn't get better, it didn't improve. You can see the varying pigmentation here, the irregular edges, the darker areas. And this was Alan's composite view of the, um, the pattern. Again, it's a parallel a ridge pattern. It's the thickened ridges. Alan, uh, I think, also commented in this um, that there were some grey circles in here as well. You know, the eccrine ducts open in the middle of these ridges. And Alan commented that there were grey circles around the eccrine ducts. Um, and the interesting thing here is that this was all in situ when it was subsequently removed. And that's unusual because usually acromelanomas are uh, a bit thicker than elsewhere um, before they're really diagnosed. So this was a nice early pickup while it was still inside you. Again, there would be removal with a large graft. Uh, to continue the theme, this one I'll need to append. This was from Dr. Greg Canning uh, from Townsville, one of his patients. Again, look at this lesion on the heel towards the instep. Diffuse, 
darker pigmentation here. You might think it was a bruise, but again, you look with the dermatoscope, and here you've got your typical parallel ridge pattern again. A bit uh, darker here, but go out towards the edges, and then you can see this parallel ridge pattern. So I hope we're getting the message across as to what a parallel ridge pattern is. These were the images of uh, Greg's case. Um, there was some papillary dermal fibrosis with melanophages in here. That's what these brown things are. The pink is the, is the dermal fibrosis. And here, these clear cells are, uh, are your melanoma cells going up into the epidermis showing pagetoid spread. Sometimes they'll go right up into the stratum corneum here. You'll get uh, nuclei in here. This is a lentiginous proliferation of atypical melanocytes along the basement membrane here, the dermoepidermal junction. And again, luckily, this one was uh, mainly, I think it was mainly in situ. Um, yeah, I think it was. Uh, it was basically an in situ melanoma. There we go, melanoma in situ, level one. So a lentiginous proliferation of atypical melanocytes is what you're seeing there and some pagetoid spread. The thing you've got to watch a little bit about acral lesions is you sometimes, um, even benign acral nevi, you can sometimes get a few clear cells going up into the epidermis. This is not the first time that a benign acral ne nevus has been misdiagnosed as a melanoma, but there's no doubt about that being a melanoma, um, just clinically. Another one from Dr. Dai Tran uh, from the blog, again, Clinically, I don't think you'd have any doubts that this is a, a melanoma. Looking at it dermatoscopically, again, your parallel ridge pattern with your furrows here. This one had some pigment dots and clods uh, in there as well. And so what's your differential of a parallel ridge pattern? Well, this is it here, a subcorneal hemorrhage um, where there's been some bleeding just underneath the stratum corneum. I think they sometimes call it talon noir, uh, where it's a frictional injury in basketball players or people with uh, occlusive type footwear that uh, get friction on the heel. Then all you do is take a blade and trim this. You get a different feel when you, uh, and it just has that russet lead look of, of blood, and then you can trim the whole thing away there. So that not all parallel ridge patterns uh, mean melanoma. Some can be just simple subcorneal bleeding. So that should lead us on now to um, the subungal melanomas, melanomas under nails. Um, and that's always a little bit more difficult. Let's still look at this clinical case first. Um, this again is from the blog. These reasons are relatively rare, and uh, I'm very grateful to my colleagues who have uh, submitted these cases to the blog that I've been able to select some of them. This one, you hardly need a dermatoscope. Um, in a subungal melanoma, you've got, it's usually just one nail that's involved. You've got pigment bands of varying thickness, varied, varying width, and varying color, and they're parallel. And you can see involvement here of pigment going into the uh, posterior nail fold here, or at least uh, you've just got to watch this now to pseudo Hutchison's, where you're just looking through the clear. Uh, fold here um, and you're actually seeing the pigment underneath but once it starts to get up into this skin tissue here then it's a true Hutchison sign and this was the distal end here where you could see melanoma cells extending into the surrounding skin so uh, one nail varying uh, color and thickness uh, a width of uh, lines that are parallel and perhaps with a Hutchison sign Let's look at this one here. This was from the blog, courtesy of Jean-Yves Gaon from France. Here, look at the different lines. There are varying lines here, varying thickness. And here, there's a Hutchison sign where the pigment's extending out beyond uh, the edge of the nail fold here and into the surrounding skin. And there's been nail dystrophy damage to the matrix here as well. And when you look with the dermatoscope, you've got varying lines here, varying thickness, um, and Jean-Yves points out this little phenomenon here of loss of parallelism where the lines dip a little bit there. You've got this disrupted area here, 
and pigment in the posterior nail fold uh, here as well. This one was a Clark level 3.9 millimeter thick subungal melanoma. So we should just finish with a couple of other clinical ones. Uh, gentleman I saw before I had my dermatoscope, so it was some time ago. Um, there was that you can see the varying thickness of lines here, the nail dystrophy here, the extension of pigment onto the surrounding skin, and the prominence of uh, pigment at the posterior nail fold there. And in this one, you've got complete dystrophy of the nail from the melanoma. You've got extension of it into the skin here. You've got a bleeding of it into the skin around here as well. These cases generally require uh, amputation through the uh, DIP joint um, to uh, give cure, but often they're quite delayed in diagnosis and they can be, you know, two, three, four millimeters thick before they're in fact picked up and often they've in fact spread elsewhere. So be aware of subungal melanoma. It's generally uh, one nail that's involved, it's usually in an adult, and you've got lines of varying thickness, uh, varying width of pigmentation with parallelism, and your acromelanoma with your lines, parallel ridge pattern, and the only differential was your subcorneal hemorrhage. So, two very important topics, acromelanoma, subungal melanoma. Thank you very much.